Not right, I'm back. <clears throat> Same beer as my mail call unboxing video. This is Silver City Brewing's Tropic Chronic IPA, which is a twist on their flagship Tropic Haze, Hazy IPA. This one, they added a little bit of the sticky icky, <laughs> the dank chronic. Um, they threw some cannabis in this thing. I don't know how they made it happen, but that fucking skunky, dank aroma comes right at you in the nose, and it's bold and banging on the flavor as well. I would say you have to be a fan of that profile to like this beer, but it's all right. I probably will never buy this again, but if you like that profile, this might be the best shit you've ever had. I would say the nose, aroma, and the flavor profile, they are like aligned. They all hit the same notes. Skunky, dank, and it's just like all cannabis. <laughs> um, so there's that. All right, let's get into it. This is hashtag Barrister and Man Week put on by um, BBS.live. Um, Melly Mel's themed week is Barrister and Man Week, and so we are doing Barrister and Man's um, 2021 seasonal here for the winter time, and this is a Maisel Nut. This was first released as a Soft Heart um, series, and it is now in the Omnibus um, soap base, and I like that they put Omnibus on the side of the tubs now, because previously... There was a little squiggly that it stood for Excelsior previous to that. I mean, it, it was real hard to tell what the hell, which base it was, if you weren't ingratiated in Barrister and Man's um, comings and goings. But, really nice side label, and top label for that matter. Nice uh, touches of gold and, and warm browns. There's the um, uh, ingredients for you, which that is an absolute laundry list. Or a Star Wars intro, as I say sometimes. Huge list. And I love the gold foil for the hazelnuts and leaves. Let's go ahead and crack it open and take a look. Typical Barrister and Man smooth pour. You can see where I scooped some right there. And this stuff is nice. We'll get right into it in a second. It's, uh, I bought it right off Barrister and Man's website. 20 bucks for four ounces of the Omnibus soap base. Still pretty good deal. Um, we got it all lathered up right here in the Thirsty Badger lather bowl. Canadian made shave bowl right there. Has nice ridges on it. And then, <coughs> uh, excuse me, felt that one coming. And then we got that darn Rob's um, brush right here. This is the bird's eye maple with the ivory cream top and an AP Shave Go Sinbad Synthetic Knot. And we have a very nice, uh, creamy, luxurious looking lather there. And um, that darn Rob is now Chisel and Hound. Most of us know that, but if you didn't. So let's get, uh, let's get some lather on the face and we will continue. So on top of uh, Barrister and Man's, Barrister and Man Week, Put on by bbs.live. Uh, my boy Lord Shady and um, Canadian Mafia member Magic Mike, they are also doing a themed week of their own, um, which includes Barrister and Man's products, and that one is called Gothique Angelique Week, using specifically Fougere Gothique or Fougere Angelique by Barrister and Man. Both great scents. Let's get the lather on the face. So I'll try to participate in that as well. I just got off the heels of Mary and the Barbarians Pillars of Funk Week. And it's funny because this soap here has um, vetiver in it. And some people might even put vetiver as a pillar of funk uh, in certain situations I would say 
You know, it's kind of maybe in that B class of of pillars of funk. Maybe not A class, but there's times where vetiver can get a little a little uh, earthy, maybe too earthy for for fresh boys. That's it's a possibility. And this new omnibus bass, a little bit goes a long way, even though it's a uh, softer soap. I didn't load heavy. I'm also using a synthetic brush, so there's that. I'm gonna paint in a little bit more water down here just because I feel like I can get away with it. But it does carry this nice, creamy density, which I notice and appreciate. Um, for me, it is, you know, but a stone's throw from Excelsior. I do not think this is some giant leap. Um, and, you know, I, other people have, have said, you know, they can easily tell the differences and it's better than Excelsior. Um, I just wholeheartedly disagree. It, to me, it creates very much the same low structure, high density lather. It lathers up very easily, just like Excelsior did. Um, the end result looks and feels a lot like Excelsior. The post shave, the, I mean, if you go down the line, it's like neck and neck, in my opinion. But uh, both phenomenal soap bases. We got the Timeless Bronze right here. Nice scalloped head, uh, barbershop spiral on the handle. And then this one is uh, the .38 standard bar. I don't know if it's gonna focus down there, but you can maybe see down here, .38 standard bar. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's get right into this. I have a uh, Permasharp on it, and I do not know how many uses it has on it because it's been a while since I picked the blade up but it is a used blade very nice very smooth very slick this is my first time using the omnibus soap base but I'm still pretty early on in my uses of it I will say nothing in these early outings has made me think that this is head and shoulders better than Excelsior. And the only reason I'm kind of driving that home and repeating it is because <laughs> I disagree with some of the early um, reviews that I've seen on it. I do not think this is head and shoulders better than um, Excelsior in my opinion or soft heart in my opinion they're they're all pretty damn neck and neck and they're all really damn good if you can't get a good shave with these any of those three soap bases it's probably you <laughs> probably you <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about the scent on this one it's about a 5 out of 10 right around medium maybe maybe ever so slightly over medium but kind of really depends on if you're having a, a good nose day or a bad nose day um, this one's been sitting in my bathroom for a few days um, acclimating to the temperature so there's definitely no like jet lag which sometimes your if your soap doesn't get to acclimate to your house the scent doesn't really come out full force right away I've experienced that my buddy uh, Ken over at shave 326 he's the first one who brought that up and um, I experienced it myself, so when he said it, it kind of made sense to me. That little bit of jet lag, if you're 
soap doesn't acclimate to your your house's temperature before you start giving it a whiff and making passing judgment on it. All right, pass one was very enjoyable, very smooth. So it has um, it's a blend like a woody blend of um, vetiver oil, hazelnut, and vanilla. And so what I get from it is kind of a a warm gourmand scent that is grounded by some earthy vetiver, but it's not overly earthy. It's definitely more so a gourmand scent for sure. The, the gourmand features of that hazelnut are front and center. That's the, the main attraction on this one is that hazelnut. And I absolutely love it. I don't think it's super sweet or cloying. As a matter of fact, I think it's, you know, hardly. It, it's it's kind of light on the sweetness. It's not like a thick, creamy type of um, cloying sweetness. It's light on the sweetness. Has good hazelnut character. And then I think the, um, the vetiver just kind of keeps it grounded by adding a little bit of a kind of dirty characteristic underneath. Will describes it as like having um, hazelnut flavored coffee. And that kind of makes sense, even though there's no coffee in the scent accord, but um, the same way that the, the roasty black coffee would, would keep the uh, sweet hazelnut and vanilla grounded. I think it's much the same that the vetiver is keeping the sweet hazelnut and vanilla grounded. Really, really nice scent for the fall and winter time or any time there's cold weather or just any time you're in the mood for a nice gourmand scent. This one will definitely scratch that itch. And look at that. That is some beautifully dense creamy lather no you know no bubbles no troubles this is just completely worked in dense creamy lather and I, you know me I like my lathers a little bit drier so this I guarantee you could take a fair bit more water but this is where I like it especially um, when I'm just doing a simple DE shape all right against the grain I am kinda happy that I held out and got this in the omnibus soap base instead of the soft heart not because I don't like soft heart. I think soft heart is fucking awesome. Um, but it's simply because the um, this release has a nice um, dedicated label to a maisel nut, whereas the soft heart obviously has the the um, cookie cutter soft heart labels, which has the kind of uh, dreary roses. Um, kind of vibe to it, but they're all the same. All the soft heart labels are the same, so kind of happy I got it in this one instead. Even though I very much wanted the soft heart one when it originally released, I just never got around to it. All right, hell yeah, so far, so good. The uh, Timeless here still has a little bit of blade feel, even though it has such a low blade gap. It still has just a little bit of blade feel, which I appreciate. I do think it's a very comfortable shaver, though. I just got 
gobs of lather in that beard. That is going to be a pain in the ass to clean out. Alright, let's do a little razor flip. Get this other side involved. Man. That just feels great. I'm not sure if you can hear the the kind of uh, what do they call it? Buttering toast sound effect where it kind of has that scraping sound effect. But that is some good stuff right there. <laughs> That's just feeling great. It's one of those ones where it's like I better chill before I end up over shaving because it's just feeling so good. This is a good way to uh, kick off Barrister and Man Week, which it seems like for the second time in a row, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm getting involved in a theme week during the middle of the week, but it is what it is. All right, let's get this uh, remainder lather off the face, and we will get into some uh, matching aftershave here. Absolutely no gripes with the new Omnibus base. The more I use it, the more familiar I'm getting with with it. And uh, I think I was able to approach it the same way I do with all my other soaps. There's no weird, um, no weird tendencies that I've found with this soap base yet. It just kind of... It does what it's supposed to do, and it does it easily, and it does it in a fantastic fashion. So, two thumbs up. If you don't know, Barrister and Man announced that this will be their last final soap base. This is it. Got the Lancaster Razorworks towel here. Still a staple of my daily shaves. <clears throat> I was talking to Andre, and he said that he uh, he took a spill and hurt his leg, and I don't think Andre from Lancaster has um, announced that yet, so I don't want to go too far into it, but just kind of a bummer, especially this time of year when things are a little bit more hectic and a little bit more busy. Getting an injury during this time of the year is kind of a kind of a setback and a big bummer so I hope Andre uh, gets well soon for sure my thoughts are with him as he recovers but uh, as far as my thoughts on this being Fair Stern Man's last soap base I I think it's bollocks <laughs> it's bollocks only for the fact that, you know, I think Bear Stern Man is going to be in the business, a prominent, big, a prominent figure in the business for years and years to come. And whenever the industry inevitably starts pushing forward and finding the next key ingredient or the next, um, the consumer's their tendencies start changing and their wants start changing and at some point the outdated soap base is gonna be um, left behind or deem lesser than you know newer improved soap bases so at some point they will be forced to reformulate and come out with something new um, so I think them saying that this is their last soap base was kind of um, kind of like when old school rock stars say this is my this is my last tour, you know. If you ever wanna if you wanna see me one last one last ride, 
you know, come out and come out and support me on this last tour. And, you know, everybody goes gangbuster and they pay for tickets that are overpriced because they think this is it, the last ride. And then two years down the road, guess what's announced? <laughs> Their last tour. And so I think... Um, I think uh, Barrister and Man saying this is their last soap base is kind of a uh, kind of premature, and uh, maybe a few years down the line we'll be hearing Barrister and Man talk about their next uh, last soap base. <laughs> uh, anyways, but that's just me having fun. That was a wonderful shave. Uh, hashtag Barrister and Man Week is off to a good start. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you appreciated the video. Enjoy the video, and I appreciate you. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.